Medics, what were the most haunting last words you've heard from a patient? Story 1. My uncle was born with Down syndrome. He was 42 when he died, but had the mind of a three-ish year old. He could do things like brush his teeth, dress himself, etc., but needed prompting and supervision. My grandma, his mother, died in 1974. My uncle died in 1984. The night before he died, he told all of us that Mama came to see me last night. My dad asked him if he had a dream about Mama. He said, no, she sat on my bed with me and told me she was coming to get me soon and take me home with her and not to be scared because it was all okay. We dismissed it. 24 hours later, he passed peacefully in his sleep. Story 2. I was about five or six when my grandfather was on his deathbed. The last thing he did was put his hand on my shoulder and said, no wonder you never liked my spicy food. Then he passed about 10 seconds later. We were all super confused. About three months later, I almost died from suffocation after eating some salsa. At the hospital, I was diagnosed with a capsaicin allergy, spicy food. To this day, it still creeps me out. No one knew I was allergic before then, and I didn't show any signs either. Story three, it wasn't words, but the most haunting death was a patient who was DNR through her and her family's wishes. She was losing her battle and her family wasn't there. She was getting frantic and looking around and half sitting up in bed and a nurse with more experience than me took her hand and calmly said, it's okay, you're not alone, we're right here with you, it's okay to leave. The patient immediately calmed, put her head back on the pillow and died. I knew I wanted to be that nurse when I grew up. How the hell did she know just what to do and say? I have never forgotten it. Story 4. My pop died of lung cancer. The last lucid thing he did was wake up just long enough to sing, show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago and it went right to my head. It was pretty amazing and freaky at the same time cancer. Dad was over 80 and had smoked for a lot of his life. I still miss him but he lived a long life and his time had come. I've lost a couple of friends who are my age to cancer and those deaths are much harder to accept. He was a foot soldier in what you would too and he sang that song while marching through Germany I believe. Story 5. Nurse. In the hospital caring for a 40-ish man with a brain tumor coming in and out of consciousness not to be resuscitated. His 16-year-old daughter was crying non-stop for 12 hours. His wife, who had been given a few months to prepare herself, was calm and focused on her husband. I had to routinely check his level of consciousness, which involved talking to him in a loud voice, response to auditory stimulation, which I did not like to do. So I asked his wife to do the loud voice part, so the voice he would hear would be hers, not mine, and she did so without hesitation. The only response we observed, her vocalization was that this by now profoundly unconscious patient took her hand to his lips and kissed it. He stopped breathing very soon after that. I am haunted, but not in a bad way. Story 6. A patient in the cardiac ICU during my second month of intern year had newly diagnosed heart failure and we couldn't figure out what caused it. He was a healthy guy, in his 60s, did yoga every day and walked a few miles five days a week. Genuinely nice guy which is always a bad prognostic sign. With his heart failure his heart was stretched out and not squeezing adequately to provide the blood and subsequent oxygen he needed to the rest of his body. A few nights into his hospital stay, I came in the next morning and discovered that the senior resident had to code for him for sustained unstable heart arrhythmia, unstable VTAC. I went and talked with him about it the next morning and he told me that he was in and out of consciousness during it all from the low blood pressure, but he compared it to the feeling of jumping out of the plane and skydiving. Later that morning I was checking on him again and he didn't look so good. He goes into the arrhythmia again, drops his blood pressure, and is in and out of consciousness. As I'm charging the defibrillator to shock him again, he comes back around and briefly asks me if I'm taking him skydiving again and lets out a nervous laugh before losing consciousness. Story 7. Not the very last words, but I had a patient in her early 20s who was severely thrombocytopenic and bleeding profusely for days, asking me if she was going to make it. I had to look her in the eyes and tell her there was a good chance she wouldn't. I thought she would burst into tears, but no. She just kind of sat back and accepted it. I think she already knew. She died shortly after I got off shift. I've always told patients they may die if things are heading south rapidly. Remind them that we will do everything we can regardless. So far, they've all responded just like what you've described. I still question if I'm doing the right thing, though.
Story 8, paramedic here. I was transporting a cardiac patient, and while we were both watching my EKG monitor, he went into V-fib, a lethal heart rhythm. His heart stopped pumping blood effectively at that point, but there was enough blood pressure for a few seconds of consciousness. He looked at me and said, but I don't see the light, and went unconscious, coded him, shocked him a few times, and meds by the handful, but he died. Story 9. During my residency, I was on call and running the hospital, as senior residents tend to do. One of my responsibilities was being in charge of the entire ICU, which had about 1620 bed capacity. I was taking care of a man who had a bowel perforation, a hole in his intestines. He had an NG, nasogastric tube up his nose into his stomach so that he wouldn't drown in his feces. His brother and sister-in-law came to visit him and they had a nice conversation. I walked in as they were leaving and they said to him, make sure to listen to the doctor as they left. The patient and I talked a bit and he wasn't looking so good. I kept hearing a gurgling sound as he was speaking to me, the kind of sound you make when you rinse out your mouth with mouthwash and spit it out. I immediately checked his NG tube and it came right out. He looked at me and said, I shouldn't have played with the tube before going pale and losing a pulse. I did everything in my power to save him that day, but his lungs were full of stool and he died 20 minutes later. The rest of the day I felt utterly numb and it still sits with me to this day. To have a patient smiling and laughing with you one moment, then being deceased 20 minutes later is one hell of a roller coaster ride. Story 10, my husband is a PICU nurse, and one morning he came home in a bit of a daze. I asked him what was wrong, and he told me about a little boy who had been in PICU for a few days already and wasn't getting better. Most nights the little boy would wake up, so one of the nurses would keep him company while he fell asleep again. My husband was doing just that. He read him a book and then just sat there with the boy listening to music so he would go back to sleep. Before falling asleep, the little boy said, You were my favorite. The boy passed away in the morning. His little heart gave out and refused to restart. Although all patients are important, some leave more of an impression than others. Until that point, that little boy hadn't stood out to my husband, and he felt terrible about it because clearly he had made a big impression on that little boy. That was the only patient's funeral he had ever attended. Story 11 I'm a medical worker, but this is just a personal story about when my dad passed. He had pancreatic cancer and had a mild seizure the night before. The doctor came in to assess him and asked him a few questions. He couldn't remember what year it was. His name? Nothing. The doctor turned and pointed at me and said, Who's that? My dad confidently replied, That's my baby girl. A girl has no username. He went silent after that, coded a bit later, and died the next day. He couldn't remember anything but that I was his daughter, and those were his last words. Story 12 not a medical worker, but I knew a guy from middle school who had a degenerative disease and he knew he'd die young. It was New Year's Eve and he'd just gotten out of the hospital for the third time in a few months, so we were partying at his apartment. Somehow I ended up being the last person there with him and his girlfriend and we were pretty drunk and got to talking for a while about how great the party was, how nice it was to have friends like ours and plans for the future. All of a sudden he said, God, I wish I had more time. I always thought I'd have more time. Time. Not his last words, but they're the ones that stuck with me. We weren't close by any stretch, but I always wished he had more time too. He was so friendly and kind, the type of person who made you feel like their closest friend, even if you were a total stranger. He was a good man, and he deserved a longer life. Story 13 RN here. We had a patient in our unit for almost a year. He was so mean, though we were always hurting him when we tried caring for him. Every interaction was very unpleasant. Well, I just had a bad breakup and was, the world is ending, wait, depressed. The day he died, he was calm and asked me if I was married, which set the time and made me kind of sad. So I just answered, no, I'm not. And he just said, you'll find someone and I know you aren't trying to hurt me. It was so concise, to the point, and memorable for me. Honestly, it was the sweetest thing he could have said to me, and given the scenario, I would say it was the sweetest thing anyone has said. On his deathbed, no formalities, just telling me what he had always wanted to talk to me about. I cried when I left his room, and he passed away right at 7 p.m. when my shift ended, so I got to be with him. Story 14 had a patient that kept coding, but every time they came back, they'd get crazy strong, fight everyone, and then start saying the Lord's Prayer. They'd trail off and code again. Another one snatched me by the arm and pleaded that they wanted to see their baby grow up. Sixty seconds later, I was pumping away on their chest, 
In my line of work, I hear a lot of last words. These two, though surprisingly weren't the final last words, I just thought they were. And at the time it was a perfectly rational thought. Of last words, my favorites were always the, I want you to go away and leave me alone. I'm going to sleep. Goodbye. Family members didn't pick up on that one, but that patient and his eyes said it all. Story 15. I hesitate to post this, but here I go. Years ago, I had a patient who had dementia, but was also a phasic due to a CVA. She was a DNR. Anyway, I went in about an hour to 45 min before my shift was up to check her over and make sure she and the room were good for the next shift. However, this time she seemed interested in trying to talk to me. This was unusual. She didn't seem like she was in duress though. VS looked good and she had no signs of pain or discomfort. Turned her, fluffed the pillows and new linens and made sure she was clean and dry. I tried my best to gather some grasp of what she wanted, but to no avail. I spent the better part of the last part of my shift trying to figure out what she was trying to tell me. Eventually, I got called out of the room to help another patient. Just before my shift ended, I got a call from the monitor tech asking me to check the telemetry leads on her as they weren't getting a signal. I go into the room to find her asystolic. She had died in the 10 or 15 minutes from when I left the room. She had no family to speak of. She was a DNR at that point and it wasn't that much of a surprise. But I often wonder what she was trying to tell me and I feel a lot of guilt that that maybe I missed something and that ultimately she died alone still haunts me. Story 16. I'm not a medical worker, but on February 28th of this year, we had a bad ice storm in Oklahoma. I had no choice but to go to work and I worked 45 miles from home. The roads were awful and a solid sheet of ice. I witnessed a car accident, a double tractor trailer, semi versus a Ford Focus. I had to stop because of it and I ran slid to her immediately. My dad is a retired firefighter EMT and my mom is a nurse so I wanted to try to help if I could. When I got to her she was hanging out of the driver's side window and the back of her head on one side was missing. When I went to feel for a pulse on her wrist she grabbed me even though she was unconscious. She was gurgling and wheezing. I stayed and held her as she passed. I listened to the gurgling and begged her to open her eyes and she wasn't alone. That was the worst thing I heard. Story 17. I had a guy who had a cardiac arrest in a swimming pool. He came to my ICU. The lifeguards have managed to get him back at the poolside, so a short downtime, which usually means a good thing, turned out he had dysrhythmia, funny heartbeat, which had resolved. So we woke him up from his medically induced coma, and he was great, smiling, waving, talking. He remembered feeling unwell in the swimming pool, etc. Fast forward two hours, and his nurse starts shouting for help. The guy is screaming and really agitated. He grabs me, looks me square in the eyes and shouts, something bad is about to happen. I have never seen fear or panic like it. He pulls out all his lines. He bites through his arterial line so he's losing blood everywhere and he's standing on the bed screaming. We cannot calm him down or reassure him he is safe. He just screams and shouts and panics and then he stops collapses and goes into cardiac arrest and passes. In the medical profession, we talk about a sense of impending doom. I now work in palliative care, so see lots of people who die, but this was so visceral. He was so scared. It was harrowing. I will never forget the look in his eyes. Story 18. I'm a nurse. I started off working in a pediatric ER. Towards the end of my first year, this woman came in with her eight-year-old daughter who was feeling dizzy and had a poor appetite. She hadn't had her flu shot and it was flu season, so she took her in because her symptoms were bad enough she was worried that she may need medical intervention. So we asked her a few questions and then I noticed this huge red bruise on her side that covered half of her side. I noticed another one on her back when we went to check her heartbeat. Then she fainted. We were able to get her stable and when she woke up she said she was just feeling weak. Because we were thinking about the flu, we got her hooked up to an IV. I mentioned the bruises to the doctor and he asked the mother to leave so we could talk to the little girl in private. Is there anything you want to tell us now that your mother's not here? She nodded and looked down shamefully. We asked her what, and that's when she told us that she was bleeding. She admitted that for a month, she had lots of nosebleeds at school, at least a few times a week, and then she showed us something that terrified us. She showed us an ulcer she had inside of her lip. We went from thinking about the flu to abuse to cancer fast. We sent her to get some tests done ASAP and never heard back. A few weeks later, I transferred to St. Jude's. Turns out she was getting treated there and her tests came back positive for leukemia. She was not doing well. I was working as a chemotherapy nurse right away and would work with her a lot along with a few other patients. 
she just got worse. Before one session, she looked at me with the saddest eyes and said, I don't think I'm going to live for much longer. Tell my mom that I love her more than anything and anyone else. It was so heartbreaking to hear, but nurses have to be stoic and I had to suck it up. After that session, another nurse took over and I ran outside and broke down crying. Story 19 not a healthcare worker, but my grandfather passed away this week at 89 years old. He was a very sharp, sane man, not senile or with any dementia. The two days leading to his passing, he began to see things. He asked me, do you see Michelangelo's painting? I said no. He said he's painting invisible dust. Everything he paints disappears. I hope the bathroom is still there. He also told us he could see little men jumping from the fan blades. It was really strange. It sounded like he was tripping acid, but obviously he wasn't. He prayed over and over the night before he passed. Story 20. My buddy who went on to be a doctor had an elderly female patient, probably 90 to 100 years old. Her daughter left the room to get coffee and my buddy had to check on her vitals. They were normal. Then she woke up, smiled, and got teary-eyed. She said, I knew you'd come back for me. I'm sorry I didn't marry you. My family wouldn't let me. But I will now, I promise. My buddy just held her hand and smiled. She laid back and closed her eyes and her heart stopped. She had a DNR and was gone just like that. Her daughter had no clue what she meant. Her husband had been dead for 10 years and they were married since they were 20. My buddy doesn't know if it's relevant, but we are black. And maybe she was in love with a black guy a long time ago because she was looking right at him when she spoke. Story 21. When I was a senior resident, a young man, late 20s, was admitted for pneumonia. He got worse quickly, and I was called to his room to help while on call that night. He was having trouble breathing and needed to be intubated. I explained all this to him and that I would sedate him and then get him intubated so we could help him breathe. He agreed, and we got everything ready. The last thing he said to me was, Doc, please don't let me die. I told him I would do my very best. I got him intubated and transferred to the ICU. A few weeks later, I was on call covering the ICU, and he was barely hanging on. I knew he would not make it through the night. He went into V-fib several times, and I was able to bring him back, but only briefly. He was just too sick, and he died shortly after that. It was horrible talking to his mother and girlfriend and comforting them, knowing the last words he ever spoke were to me saying, please don't let me die. Story 22 not a medical worker, but when I was 14, my friends and I were joking around before our 7th period theater class. My one friend, who was always a big goof, was playing along with a joke that he and another classmate were breaking up and said, this relationship is over, then spun around around and fell to the floor for dramatic effect. Except it wasn't for a dramatic effect, because he actually suffered heart failure and died instantly from an unknown condition, acute myocarditis. None of us realized it and laughed along. I even picked up his glasses from the floor and put them on to tease him about how blind he was. When I tried to give him his glasses back, I was struck by how discolored his face was, and then blood began to pour from his mouth. That's when the screaming started. Absolutely screwed me as a 14-year-old to realize we could all just drop dead at any moment. Story 23. I worked as a unit clerk in an ICU some 20 years ago. There was an HIV positive man who came in in his early 40s and he'd signed a DNR DNI advanced directive do not resuscitate do not intubate when he was first diagnosed he knew death was inevitable and didn't want to drag it out when he was admitted to the ICU with pneumonia the doctors and nurses reconfirmed with him that he didn't want any heroic measures if he stopped breathing or if his heart stopped he looked tired and done with life and said yes later that evening his blood gases kept getting worse and his o2 sats kept dropping he knew the end was coming for him and all of a sudden in a burst of energy he yelled to his nurse that he changed his mind and wanted to live those were his last words i changed my mind i want to live story 24 i worked in long-term care for eight years and many of my residents were in end-of-life care one gentleman in particular was a super sweet very kind man he was always very polite and happy to see us one evening i went to perform his care and he began screaming and tried to wrap his oxygen tubing around my neck i got myself out of the situation made sure he was safe and left to give him an opportunity to calm down when i returned he was in good spirits. He asked me to hold his hand, and I obliged. He said to me, I'm so sorry for the way I behaved. Can you forgive me? I told him, yes, I forgave him. He looked so relieved. I finished my care and told him I was almost off shift and wished him a good night. He said, I will, I'm going home. 
I thought it was a bout of confusion, so I played along and told him I was happy for him. He passed away two hours later. Still gives me the chills. Story 25. There are white nuns and black nun ghosts in my hospital, dressed in either a white or black habit. I work in the palliative unit, dying patients, and a person's last words are when they see a nun. It could be simple as, could you tell the nun not to wake me up tonight? She kept waking me up last night to see if I was okay. Or we ask, who are you talking to? And they reply, the nun sitting over there. The meaning of the nuns are, dressed in white. They are helping and comforting, dressed in black. None of death. Patients will describe them in detail, and they are all described the same. One night shift I was sitting down and I noticed someone, dressed in all black, go into a patient's room. Me being nosy and found it weird for a visitor to come at 2 a.m. I peeked in to see who the visitor was being that this patient never had visitors before. I walked in and no one was there. He passed away that night. When I had put him to bed that night he didn't seem close to death at all. The nuns are real. And it freaks the shit out of me when patients talk about the nuns. Story 26 Paramedic Probably because it was my first up-close witness death. I was like, damn, 20? Seems like forever ago. Seems like I'm there right now. A guy in a small pickup rear-ended another vehicle on a backcountry road in the fog and was then rear-ended by another car going 60 miles per hour plus, which was then rear-ended by a sheriff's deputy, and on and on. He was pinned into the seat by a steering wheel, his chest was compressed, and he was unable to take more than the smallest breath. He looked me dead in the eye and said, I don't want to die. Each each word was a struggle. I was useless at that point. All my training was just gone. I remember standing up and seeing the IV bag someone had tossed on the roof, and then back in the truck it looked like he had just gone to sleep. I don't remember much after that. 25 years later, I've worked many more grisly scenes than this, and it doesn't affect me. I punch in, do the job, punch out, go home. I suppose it was haunting because I didn't do anything. Now I do something. Me today might have gotten him another 10 years with his family. Who knows? I guess if you're reading this and you've had a similar situation, you're going to give up. Maybe don't. You're immunized now. To not continue would be disrespectful.